bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Well, hey everybody, how you doing? I know it's Tuesday, not Friday, but well, I think I mentioned in a previous video that uh, given the fact we're locked down and shut in and have limited supplies of food and so I'm kind of cooking the basics that I would do some story times instead of uh, cooking videos. So hope you don't mind. Hope you enjoy today's story. So instead of saying happy Friday, I'm going to say happy Tuesday. There we go. And we're going to do shout outs as well. So our first two shout outs, well, our first two are only two, our two shout outs for today. The first one is Arkansas Woodcutter. And uh, it's a great channel. Uh, it's basically on homesteading, but if you're not homesteading, it's okay because you can still learn lots of interesting things about gardening, about uh, building simple things and sheds and, and that. Uh, recipes has a great sourdough starter recipe on there if you're looking for a sourdough starter. But uh, just a fascinating channel. So I encourage you to check out Arkansas Woodcutter. The second channel is Mountain View Turning. And it's a video about wood turning. Uh, using a lathe, of course, and turning things in wood, but also some great shop tips in that. And even if you don't do woodwork yourself, it's just amazing, actually fascinating, to watch a chunk of wood put on a lathe and then turned into a beautiful bowl or, or some other object. So really encourage you to go by and, and check out uh, Mountain View Turning. So those are our channels for today, Arkansas Woodcutter and Mountain View Turning. All right, it's story time. You ever wonder where the television came from? Well, let's find out, shall we? The teenager who invented television. Responsible for what may have been the most influential invention of the 20th century, this farm boy never received the recognition he was due. Philo T. Farnsworth's brilliance was obvious from an early age. In 1919, when he was only 12, he amazed his parents and older siblings by fixing a bulky electrical generator on their Idaho farm. By age 14, he had built an electrical laboratory in the family attic and was setting his alarm for 4 a.m. so he could get up and read science journals for one hour before starting his chores. Farnsworth hated the drudgery of farming he often daydreamed solutions to scientific problems as he worked. During the summer of 1921, he was particularly preoccupied with the possibility of transmitting moving pictures through the air. At around the same time, big corporations like RCA were spending millions of research dollars trying to find a practical way to do just that. As it turned out, most of their work was focused on a theoretical dead end. Back in 1884, German scientist Paul Nipkow had patented a device called the Nipkow disk. By rotating the disk rapidly while passing light through tiny holes, an illusion of movement could be created. In essence, the Nipkow disk was a primitive way to scan images. Farnsworth doubted that this mechanical method of scanning could ever work fast enough to send images worth watching. He was determined to find a better way. His eureka moment came as he cultivated a field with a team of horses. Swinging the horses around to plow another row, Farnsworth gla <coughs> glanced back at the furrows behind him. Suddenly he realized that scanning could be done electronically line by line. Light could be converted into streams of electrons and back again with such rapidity that the eye would be fooled. He immediately set about designing what would one day be called the cathode ray tube. Seven years would pass, however, before he was able to display a working model of his breakthrough. Upon graduating from high school, Farnsworth enrolled at the University of Utah but dropped out after a year because he could no longer afford tuition. Almost immediately, though, he found financial backers and moved to San Francisco to continue his research. 
1930, a researcher from RCA named Vladimir Zaworskin visited Farnsworth, California laboratory. He copied his invention. When Farnsworth refused to sell his patent to RCA for $100,000, the company sued him. The legal wrangling continued for many years, and though Farnsworth eventually earned royalties from his invention, he never did get wealthy from it. By the time Farnsworth died in 1971, there were more homes on earth with televisions than with indoor plumbing. Ironically, the man most responsible for television appeared on the small screen only once. A 1957 guest spot on the game show I've Got a Secret. Farnsworth's secret was that I invented electric television at the age of 15. None of the panelists guessed Farnsworth's secret, and he left the studio with his winnings, $80 and a carton of Winston cigarettes. Philo T. Farnsworth grew to regret his contributions to television. He viewed TV as machines through which people wasted unfathomable amounts of time. And there you go. So that's the story behind TV. All right, you're sitting down, you got your groaner seat belts on, you're hanging on to the arms of your chair. It's time for the groaner. Well, a gentleman came in through the front door of his house one afternoon, just panting and panting and panting and could hardly catch his breath. And when he finally sat down and his wife got him a glass of water and felt he was able to talk, she says, honey, what happened? He said, I had a brainwave today. And she says, well, what, what's that? And he says, instead of riding the bus home, I ran behind it all the way and I saved 50 cents. And his wife looked at him and she said, you fool, why didn't you run home behind a taxi cab and save $3? <laughs> well, there you go. Until Friday when we have our regular shout outs story and groaner of the week. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting